Now I just have three slides that actually look at some constellations. And um, only things that I lecture on would I hold you accountable for in the exam. So these are all kind of fair game. Don't know if we'll get a chance to go out this semester and see any stars. So here we actually have um, a part of the sky. We have some constellations. Now, first off, I want to point out that you see this right here. Okay, that looks like the Big Dipper, and it is the Big Dipper, but actually the Big Dipper is simply called, is simply an asterism. Okay, the Big Dipper is an asterism, and the constellation that asterism in is in is Ursa, Ursa Major, which means Big Bear. Okay, so I, I hope that works for you. Big Bear, the, the Big Bear actually is bigger than the Big Dipper then. Um, so one of the things that I want you to know is if you can find the Big Dipper, which a lot of us can, it'll, different times of the night and different times of the year, it'll be in kind of uh, different orientations, but you can then take the, we call this the bowl, bowl, you can kind of see the bowl right here, and so these are the two far bowl stars, this one and this one, so if you take this and take a line up to the next kind of relatively bright star. It's not really very bright, but it is kind of bright. And that actually, that star is Polaris. And that star then is in the handle of the Little Dipper. Okay, kind of see the Little Dipper there? That's the handle. There is Polaris. And then at the end of the Little Dipper handle, Little Dipper handle is the bowl of the Little Dipper. Okay, so that's one of the things I want you to know. And of course, Polaris right now anyway, the, the star Polaris actually is our north star. And then related to that, we will see the constellations or the stars or the asterisms in the vicinity of the north star go counterclockwise. Make sure I get this right. Counterclockwise. That looks like counterclockwise to me. Counterclockwise around Polaris. Okay, so everything moves counterclockwise. And we talked about this in a different part in a different lecture, that at some point we have, well, we have circumpolar stars, okay, that don't dip below the horizon, and then at some point they appear to rise in the east. Did I go clockwise again? Are you serious? Oh my goodness gracious. Oh, final answer, counterclockwise. <laughs> okay, because that didn't work, did it? Counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. I knew that wasn't going to work because here's our circumpolar stars. And so basically the, um, if they're too far over here, they appear to rise what? In the east and set where? In the west. Okay, so that's kind of how that works. What else do I want you to know? Yeah, that Polaris, it's a kind of a, a little bit of a misconception out there that Polaris is a very bright star. It's very important, but it's not necessarily very bright. Okay, I think I mentioned that, um, but don't forget, make sure you get your clockwise right, okay, counterclockwise, except, excuse me, that the stars appear to rotate counterclockwise around Polaris. Okay, next slide, so that's the first of three. The next one I just want to mention, um, right now we're leaving... Uh, we're just the first part of November, and we still see actually the summer triangle, and that's on the next slide. But the winter triangle actually is uh, made up of three stars from different constellations. So in bold is the star name. Now, not all stars have neat names like this. Okay, that's my star name. Um, but then over here on the uh, right, actually, in, um, in capitals, that is the constellation. Now, um, you wouldn't say that the Winter Triangle is even an asterism. It's just like something up there in the nighttime sky, of uh, three bright stars. So here we have the constellation uh, Little Dog Canis Minor and the bright star Procyon. And over here we have everybody's favorite constellation, Orion, the bright star Betelgeuse. And over here we have... Um, the big dog, Canis Major, and Sirius is actually the brightest star um, visible in the nighttime sky. 
So the thing about brightness though, and Sirius is so bright, is it could be a combination of it's pumping out a lot of energy. It could also be a combination of Sirius is just relatively close to us. So kind of its proximity and how much energy it's pumping out gives it, it's what we call apparent brightness. But there's the winter triangle. And then the last one I have for you is the summer triangle. And like I said, this actually is still up now here, the first part of November. Um, we again over here we have the stars and we have the constellations. So let's take a look. Um, this actually is a neat little constellation. By the way, um, it's not so little, but can you kind of see this sort of this stuff right here? That is the Milky Way. Okay. And so we are actually looking into the plane of our galaxy. So that's kind of fun. Um, so anyway, uh, we have the constellation. Um, it's called, sometimes called the Northern Cross, but it's also Cygnus the Swan, Cygnus. And the Swan is flying up the Milky Way, okay? So anyway, in the constellation Cygnus, we have the bright star Deneb, and I've heard that pronounced different ways, so just bear with me. And then over here, we have this cute little constellation. It's called Lyra, and it's supposed to be like a harp or a lyre. And um, we have a bright star, Vega. Used to be my daughter's favorite star when she was like five. It's a very beautiful blue star. And then we finish off the summer triangle with the star Altair in the constellation Aquila, Aquila being the eagle. So that is the summer triangle.